So this is Durban. This is lightweight, easy sand. This is not Durban. A lot of people call this Durban. It is not. When you're doing a whole house and it's brand new construction, you really want to pre-fill these joints with Durban, not with lightweight. Um, you're going to see, it'll say easy sand five. They lie. It is not easy to sand. Even if you put this on, it does not sand. You're going to have to use a topping compound on top of it if you're going to want to sand it to make it nice and smooth. The Durban is like concrete. It will not sand. Matter of fact, you put it in the joints and it'll just, it's going to be just concrete. You drop it on the floor, you can mold stuff with it. When you take drywall and you put two pieces of drywall together, like this, you have a little gap in between. What the Durban does is as the wood shrinks up, because this wood's got a lot of moisture in it, even though it's been dry cured and everything else, just sitting out here on the job site, it's got moisture in it. There's no AC here, there's no heat here. And what the Durabond does is it stops this wood, it doesn't stop the wood from shrinking, but it stops the drywall from getting crushed together. If you look at the bottom of the drywall, you'll see that there's a little gap down there. There should be a half inch gap off the floor. So as the wood shrinks, it should give at the floor because you put Durabond in the seam. If you don't put Durabond in the seam, you're going to crush the mud and you're going to have this line in the seam. Not going to happen right away. It might be a year. It might be two years. But eventually, you are going. You are going to have to cut this crushed mud out of here and retake this seam because you didn't pre-fill this with Durban. Durban is probably the most important thing in drywall right now. If you're building a house, the most important thing in a house is the foundation of the house. The Durban is the foundation of the drywall in this house. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop 80% of your settlement cracks. That's huge. 80% of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to mix up some Durban. I do not, I only use this. Now understand, see that number five? This is going to get hard in five minutes. This 90, it's going to get hard in 90 minutes. The number is going to tell you how many minutes you have to work with. I use this for patches little patches, repairs, and stuff like that where I don't really need this and I'm just patching and repairing. I'm not doing brand new construction. So I'm going to show you how to mix this. Now there's two types of paddles you can get. This is one. Okay. This, this paddle works very well and it mixes things up very well. This is the common one. This is what everybody else uses. This is very common. But you know what? I'm using this upstairs. My, my helper's using this one downstairs. So I brought this one with me to show you. Now I'm not going to mix up a lot because he can't get rid of it as fast as I can. So I'm going to put in about a, uh, an eighth of a bucket of water. It should not be hard to get rid of this much Durban because you've got an hour and a half to put it in these seams. If you look, a lot of these seams are done that I did when I was Durban in the upstairs, but these seams are not. A lot of these seams are not done. So I'm going to take this, open it up, spill it on the floor, and, and then toss a little bit of Durban in here. Always add the water before you add the powder. If you try to add the powder first, you're going to get it all lumpy and, and it's not going to work very well. Now, probably the most important thing in drywall is if you can completely avoid it, avoid it. Don't, don't, don't do this because if you get good at it, you're not going to be able to get away with it, away from it. I've, I've, had to, I've been doing drywall now. This year is my 40th year and, and I just cannot, for the life of me, get away from it. Uh, I've tried, I've got my own business, I've had many employees, but I just, just cannot get into the office and stop taping because I just don't like the way the other tapers tape. So I want, I don't want it done my way. I want it done my way. This consistency of this is going to be like a, a thick pancake batter. So 
that's a little bit too thin but it'll thicken up a little bit because I got some lumps in there see those lumps and as soon as that breaks down I will have some lumps and this will be a little bit thicker now I like to pre-fill with an 8 inch knife this is an 8 this is a 6 there's a lot of guys who just pre-fill with a 6 because all you're really looking to do is get mud in that crack that's all you're looking to do but what I like to do if you can see this one here if you can see this one here I like to fill in the bevel a little bit because this triangle's got a bevel to it so I don't just like to get mud in the crack I like to get mud in the bevel too and you don't want to miss it I'm just kind of running around because a lot of this stuff I pre filled like I said uh, when I was doing the upstairs, but there was a lot of things leaning up against the walls So I couldn't get everything So uh, So now I'm just I'm just got to run through and pick up the little stuff That I missed before all the ceilings are going to have to get pre-filled um, But let's walk into this room Because there's a lot to do in here Okay, I'll start right here in the square. This is a perfect scene. This is a perfect bevel can you get a shot of the, the, light, the daylight going through there? Okay, so all you're looking to do is fill that gap. But you don't want to fill it so full that it's going to be crowned. Because you've got to put tape on here and mud on here and everything else. But you're trying to fill in that, fill in that crack. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's educational. I hope you've learned something. Uh, so if you really like what you see, please subscribe.